Right, week two of the Trump rally. Um, we're kicking things off this week on the 21st of November 2016 with the weekly charting analysis with myself, Jasper Lawler. Now we've got the risk warnings on the screens. I beg you to please, please pay attention to those. So things still a little bit political in markets. Over the weekend, uh, we had Sarkozy, the ex-president of France, falling out of the presidential race for for France. Um, his his one of his ex-prime ministers actually taking uh, taking his slot now now turned to the uh, the front runner in for the uh, the French presidential election. Well, obviously the big question mark is uh, can Marine Le Pen from La Front Nationale, uh, can she make it three for three in terms of a populist vote after Brexit and Donald Trump getting in? And signs are that maybe uh, you know maybe maybe she could well could well do it. Obviously that would be a a big focus point, and I think it goes some way to explain why we've seen the weakness in the euro, and it. Uh, not not just me, Marine Le Pen, but obviously the a whole host of elections. But um, the you know the Italian referendum, obviously, um, you know I think that probably nicely explains why Italian stocks notably underperformed last week. The FTSE MIB was down about three percent. Other stock markets, uh, you know, slightly positive or, or maybe even just slight slightly lower. So a clear underperformance there. And you know I think it's both politics. Obviously the politics in the U.S saw a very quick reversal, generally being seen as quite positive at the moment, and we're still all paying attention to the appointments from uh, from Donald Trump, who he's putting into his cabinet. Treasury Secretary will be a big one for, or is a big one for, for markets. You know, for Wall, uh, for Wall Street Insider, gets the top spot, which which is most likely, and to some extent makes sense, because obviously they know the ropes, they know the people to talk to at the big banks, at the big institutions. You know, if they get the nod, if someone there gets the nod, then, uh, you know, that will be well received by markets and a sign that Donald Trump is um, pulling back from um, the sort of populist narrative, you know, trying to form a sort of a more mainstream administration. Or more just specifically to markets at least, putting in someone that's obviously more favourable uh, towards market-friendly policies, deregulations and things. Um, Democrats look like they're gearing up to try and oppose uh, the repeal of Dodd-Frank, which is uh, you know, the regulations that were put in after the financial crisis to try and stop the risk-taking from the banks. Um, but obviously they have a minority now, so that you know, there's, to be honest, uh, you know, unless there's cross-party cross support, um, there's probably not too much they can really do. So, but, uh, and obviously uh, this week we have the, the autumn statement in the UK. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute, but let's just get into some of the charts here. So, you know, we've just been talking about the uh, the Trump effect, quite an extreme chart, obviously. Um, we've broken out of the, the range into record territory in the US there, but as I mentioned in my chart forum post here, we're now, we've now um, contracted into a very tight range you can see on the on the shorter time frames that it's really a triangle formation. Probably got to the point where it's almost past being a, a useful triangle. Um, it's kind of gone through the apex, if you like, um, and so you know still sort of respecting that uh, upper and lower boundary. But um, well, I say the the lower boundary, the upper one, I think gave way. So really, you you want the breakout to happen around here, and it's just been grinding out along here. So not too much to tell from this. Obviously, stock markets have a generally positive bias. You know, um, over time they tend to go up more than they go down, and uh, that's certainly the case over the last few years. We're still in very much a bullish market. You know, we're talking about just off record highs here. So you know, I think you should always think in the context of you know um, looking for the next break higher. But obviously, you know, the higher we go, the the bigger the risk of a, a more serious downturn. Um, triangle patterns are, are typically, uh, you know, uh, 
the, you know they, they can actually triangles can be both continuations and reversal patterns but you know this uh, is, is so small in nature you know when you pull out to the the daily chart it, it's more of a um, a ball pennant and so again the default for that would be a similar move to to this uh, but to the top side um, that would put us, put us you know way up into this sort of 19500 plus 19,000 is the big barrier at the moment and what I've mentioned in the um, the chart forum here is that something I'll be be looking out for um, will be a retest uh, sorry a, a, a test a first test of the 19,000 mark uh, maybe a push a bit above it um, into around maybe 1950 uh, before a, a turn lower and then a breakdown through the bottom of this consolidation zone and then maybe down to test these old highs back at uh, 18650 and then maybe more opportunities to the long side at those points so very much kind of considering where the support and resistance areas could be and looking for for signs of a short-term reversal in order to play those um, obviously when you look in a, into record territory very very hard to judge uh, what the resistance can be but um, we've had a big run up 19,000 is the big round number we're about to face um, some people have this triangle pattern teed up, ready for a big expansion higher. You know that may, um, you know, the all the people looking to to buy on the breakout up here could um, provide the kind of liquidity for the big money to come in and, and sell it down. Just something to be aware of. Um, just a, you know, especially if you are a breakout trader, you know that's something that has to be part of your strategy anyway. Being aware of the fact that it could be a a false breakout, but particularly when you're at a big round number like this, it, the, the risk increases of that happening. As I mentioned, I think probably the biggest driver will be um, the, the Trump cabinet appointments, but something also to keep in mind, and we'll, we'll have a look a bit more in detail when we get to the, the oil chart, but we've got the OPEC meeting next week. Seems to be at a bit of renewed confidence given the language that's coming out of some of the oil ministers um, that an OPEC uh, cut in production can happen. And uh, so if that's the case, that'll also be good for the, the energy sector of the stock market. And um, you know, that's, that's a big component of the, the Dow and the FTSE. Mm -hmm talking of the FTSE or the UK 100 as we trade it um, fall into a bit of consolidation pattern here a um, little bit hard to judge the way the way this can go a similar sort of analysis I would say to, to the US stocks where obviously the general long-term bias is higher but we have seen some extreme price action what what would I uh, my takeaway from this um, extreme election result is I would say default bullish you know, to it, it looks like there was a lot of buying interest in around the sort of six five six six hundred six sixty, uh, sorry six thousand six hundred type area, which is you know basically the, around the bottom of this trading range, and um, all those orders were picked up very quickly on the election night and sent the market right back higher again. So all these orders sitting down here, um, to me, talk of a sort of a, a general bullish desire to push the market higher but obviously prices went up so quickly that the people that were buying down here don't want to be buying up here so the markets drifted lower I think just looking for prices in and around this this rising trend line in order to send the market higher again that's my default that's what I'm looking for to happen around this trend line if this trend line gives way I'll certainly be a lot more cautious and obviously taking out this extreme election low uh, I think would usher in quite a uh, quite a much more deeper correction, and then we have to start looking back at these these peaks back here, um, and and even some of these lows for where that correction could end. No real indication at that point that this that that, that could happen, but obviously you know when when particularly when markets are, are driven by political events, you know you never quite know what's around the corner, and uh, you know certainly that's not out of the question whatsoever. Um, we do have the obviously the big event this week is the the UK autumn statement. I um, put a, uh, a video together about that. It's on on our special uh, UK autumn statement page. Uh, let's see if I can bring that up for you. Um, <coughs> that's uh, uh, 
Okay, it doesn't matter about that. Autumn statement due. This is straight from the CMC Markets page. Um, there we go. And uh, we've got a piece from Michael on uh, the general expectations for it, and then a little video here. So I encourage you to to have a look at that if you've got a few spare minutes. With some uh, just for some of more the more the details on the autumn statement. Um, same thing, saying the same thing over and over. But I think generally. Uh, you know, the big thing that we're looking out for is a sort of change in momentum in terms of fiscal policy away from austerity towards a bit more stimulus just to protect the economy from uh, the effects of Brexit, but also just the fact that growth has been pretty sluggish globally. Uh, it's been better in the UK than, than most parts of the world, parts of the developed world, uh, but still looking for fiscal stimulus or fiscal policy at least to kind of take some of the weight away from the the monetary side where obviously that's been pumping up markets for the last few years um, the low interest rates can the fiscal policy be enough to offset offset the, the the money that's been sloshing around and pushing markets higher in my opinion no but um, you know I don't think that's going to be an immediate effect that's going to take a little bit time for that for that f phenomenon to play out Let's have a look at Germany, our representation of what's going on in Europe. Still, you know, if you're a regular here for the chart, um, uh, for the weekly charting analysis, we've been looking at the same tedious range for a while now. Certainly been effective in terms of buying at the bottom uh, and top of it. Um, you know, probably if you'd had a, a buy down at the bottom range for the election. Well, I think we mentioned this last time that, you know, worth having a wider stop or, or cancelling your orders around such um, big events. We've, we've stalled at the top of the range again. Um, my expectation, just like the other markets, is that we will eventually push higher out of this range. And when we do, we should have a fairly clear idea in terms of a measured measured move as to where the market can go. And I would say it will be about this 11,400 mark. You know, Given that this, this range here, um, you could say it's about 600 points. 600 points in, on top of 10,800 puts us in around 11,400. Let's switch gears to currencies. Now the euro um, has been a great trade. I hope some of you have been able to catch this. It's been collapsing. Um, but there are signs that uh, not just with the euro, um, that uh, other dollar pairs look like they're, they're stalling out a bit here. So uh, we're talking about the dollar pushing into 14 year highs in terms of the dollar index. Um, and we're talking about uh, euro dollar down here at this rising long-term potential trend line here. That, I mean, that's where we're seeing signs of a, a bounce here. And that's around 106. 105 is basically the kind of lows that we dealt with in the, uh, you know, the time that the uh, the ECB first kind of started talking about um, stimulus. And obviously the, the euro has kind of been in a big 105 to 115 type range since then. We're right down obviously at the bottom of that range um, so obviously if the range is going to ma be maintained this is the time to be buying it back into the range. We've had a sharp move lower obviously scary to buy after a move down like that but you know in terms of you know I'm not necessarily saying this is going to happen again uh, but look you know we, we've had sharp moves lower um, that have quickly reversed in the past and we are running into a round number support and r rising trend line support so whatever it is that you use in terms of a bullish trigger to get into the market be it a daily candlestick pattern maybe some sort of shorter term price action pattern or maybe just an indicator signal coming out of um, being oversold you know I think look for some of those at this point because this is a this is a major support area it certainly can give way and this this um, you know we we certainly could be on the cusp of a, a really prolonged sharp period of of dollar strength given that the Fed are about to raise rates in December we think um, but nonetheless um, you know is, is is the fact that the Fed's raising rates in December such a shocker not really, no. I mean, they were supposed to raise rates all this year and they didn't because the US economy was so weak. So, 
you know, ha have things really changed that much? Um, obviously, a lot of this is pricing in higher inflation from the fiscal stimulus, but we don't know how much Donald Trump can really push through at the moment. So we might be jumping the gun a little bit here. If that, if we are jumping the gun in terms of um, when this pronounced dollar dollar strength really kicks in in the long term, um, then uh, then there's a chance for a pullback in the dollar and a bounce in the euro. So, I think I probably said all I need to on, on the euro. Let's have a look at sterling. So, still sticking with the, the four hour chart here because just the crazy price action during the flash crash, etc., uh, makes it a little bit hard to, to look at the daily chart in any meaningful way. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're breaking down a bit here on the, on the, the British pound. Obviously, a bit firmer today. Um, some, you know, I've talked about the important statement briefly, not given much detail. We did have a speech from uh, Theresa May today in front of the the CBI. She seemed to be indicating that the autumn statement is going to support the policies of monetary policy. Um, it's going to support monetary policy. Um, that would imply some level of stimulus. We don't know how much. Um, uh, but um, yeah, we, you know, obviously that's wait and see. But you know, if there is some sort of uh, fiscal stimulus to come, that you know should be pound positive. Um, so at the moment, we've we've broken through this rising trend line here bit of a head and shoulder type pattern here if that is going to meet its objective you'd use that as the height um, and then you'd project that down and that would take us towards the bottom of this um, this range uh, towards these flash, flash crash type lows that's certainly feasible and I would be surprised to see sterling roll over at this sort of 124 type mark where this rising trend line is um, so obviously this was holding price we did a sharp drop lower we've come up we've retested it as we speak if this does hold as resistance, you, we could see the market drop down through the 61.8, which has worked quite well as support. You know, obviously a confluence of support here is why we're seeing the market move higher at the 61.8 of this move higher and the old highs. If that does give way, uh, logically, uh, we're going to drop down to around the 122 handle, uh, which fits in with the 78.6% FIB. And that's obviously where you know that'd be another opportunity if you think sterling is in the midst of a bottom. Uh, I, I've mentioned it before; it's tricky using the flash crash low as a trend line point because everyone basically, every broker has a different level on their chart because we don't quite know where the market bottom there. But uh, that's another vague area of support. Um, <clears throat> suggests that um, the pound could move higher from a, from a lower point down there. Um, all this said, if we get a back above this this trend line here, um, then maybe look for a pullback towards this support again for the pound to move higher. In the short term, probably pretty autumn statement uh, related in terms of where we go on this. Let's move to the yen. Now. It doesn't get much sweeter than this. Uh, for those of you who attended last week, <coughs> you know I had uh, this is our this is our uh, breakout area. You know when we plotted on here last in last week's charting analysis webinar that the 100% extension of this rally up would take us up to here, and that is perfectly where we're pulling back from at the moment. This 111 handle, um, which obviously coincides quite nicely with these these peaks over here. So again, as the markets rallied higher, you know this is the, obviously this dollar yen pushing up just the same way that euro dollar collapsed. You know we had a little pause at the the 61.8 extension. The market stopped nicely on Thursday at our 100% uh, of the the triangle width. So the, the sorry the triangle height there projected higher. So if you traded that triangle breakout from here. Even though you'd had a few worrying moments uh, during the election, nonetheless, yeah, looking pretty tidy at the moment, taking your profit at one, the 110, um, 110 type mark. And we've actually made it a bit higher to that 100% extension of this, this break. So markets do 
tend to move in measured, uh, uh, they tend to trend in kind of measured moves. Uh, there's a certain degree of symmetry in Mar hits, and this was just a very nice example of that. The trend's still very much higher if you're using these uh, moving averages of barometer 20 above the 50. You know, I've been mentioning that in the last couple of webinars as a reason to have a, a more bullish bias on this pair. Um, that alongside the triangle breakout to the top side. Uh, so that I think remains to be the case, but obviously we're looking extremely overbought at the moment. Um, so uh, probably not the time to be going for a long-term bullish position. Um, it would probably make sense to to look for a a deeper pullback. Uh, we're still in a strong trend, so you know it doesn't have to be that. Um, you know it doesn't have to be that deeper a pullback. And you know, again, looking for your triggers um, for just a a higher low. But my suspect, my suspicion is that we uh, we pull back and come back again and don't quite make it and pull pull back for a for a steeper move. Um, I would I would suspect. Um, you know what? What's uh, what are we considering here fundamentally in terms of dollar drivers? Um, probably worth quick mentioning that I would say mostly just the Fed speakers. Um, you know, we've got a. I think last time I checked, it was a 94% chance um, of the uh, the Fed raising rates in uh, December. Let's have a quick look where we stand at the moment. Uh, Uh, ninety-eight percent now. So um, the market a near certainty that the Fed will raise rates in, um, you know, by uh, by a quarter point in December. So obviously, it goes without saying that uh, will be come as somewhat of a shock. Probably cause some pretty huge moves should they not raise rates. Um, so that's almost a given at this point, and then the, obviously the, the next factor is just how much they talk up the uh, the prospects of um, you know a faster pace of rate rises next year. For what it's worth, Janet Yellen in her testimony last week, pretty much, you know, obviously she hasn't done anything to unwind expectations of a December hike, uh, but she was a bit more cautious in terms of how the implications of fiscal policy are going to affect inflation and the Fed's target. And then we heard, I believe it was Bullard last week, um, another Fed member saying that, um, you know, they're basically their projections for 2017 are going to be unchanged because any policies enacted by um, President-elect Donald Trump probably won't really take effect until 2018 anyway. Okay, got a bit of time left here to look at the commodity market. Um, big driver for for equities today. Um, you know, on the FTSE, it's the oil and gas sector that's highest. Uh, oil prices are up two percent. Uh, you know, pretty much, um, pretty much OPEC, one hundred percent driving the oil market at the moment. Let's put up the uh, the Brent chart. <coughs> so this has all been uh, oh, oh, quite a long term chart on here, but. Um, <coughs> You know, this is where we stand. Um, we we had the push down through that significant support at 45, but didn't quite de get to 43, and we've seen a nice rebound here. Price has pushed above the 20 day moving average, um, but still the the 20 remains well below the the 50. Obviously, that's a that's a lagging type effect. What we could be looking at here is this kind of factor, where basically we're in a range. Um, where and so, <coughs> you know, if it's a long, prolonged downtrend, then these moving averages are useful. If it's a range where they just are very slow to catch the fact that the market's trading between higher and lower values, um, then they're almost of, of no use. And I just think that's probably what's about to happen here, is we're going to get a similar move to this, where we come up to the moving average, pull back, and then just zoom straight through up towards the top of the range again. That to me would make some sort of sense. That um, you know, next test to me will be 49 because that's this rising trend line, uh, which was you know been fairly fairly prominent. This 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 touch here, the third touch wasn't perfect, but it kind of it was more responding to this low here, uh, so we didn't get the full touch onto the trend line. But um, if we roll over from 49, 
uh, that could be the beginning to a, a steeper downtrend. Pretty much depends on, I would say, number one, whether the OPEC cut takes place, and number two, as to how close to their kind of original um, size of cut they they um, they they pull off. I'm not sure there's really any other variables there. Um, it doesn't really matter who cuts productions, just as long as the overall supply is is uh, is less and addresses that supply gut. Um, and then the issue that we'll have to deal with going forward is um, you know, at w whether U.S. shale is able to respond to the, the higher prices and produce more, and we end up with just still the same amount of oil in the market, still an oversupply, but it's just produced in the U.S. and by other OPEC countries like Iran and Iraq instead of Saudi Arabia. Um, so there we are. I think that was, uh, if I remember correctly, that was actually a fib support. So you're pretty close to the the 78.6 where we eventually and 78.6 and that low here obviously from um, from August 12th. So a nice little confluence of support. Um, if anyone had been buying down there, or even if you hadn't bought down there, but you'd seen this, um, you know, this big legged candlestick here. Um, that's what you want to see the next day after a reversal candlestick, a, a move higher and taking out those old highs. Um, we've got the short dip down and the market's progressing. So th this is what you want to see in terms of a trend reversal right in this area right here. Uh, let's touch on gold before we things finish things off. Uh, big leveling gold at the moment and we're getting a rebound off it. <coughs> Basically 1,200, but I would say I've mentioned here in my chart forum, 1,200 to 1,208 um, is these um, is basically the bottom of this trading range that we've been in for a while. We were drifting higher from the top of the range. Obviously, things turned uh, pretty sharply lower here. Got the the election rebound. A lot of sellers in the market for gold. Similar to the fact there's a lot of buyers um, in the uh, in the stock market at the same point in time. Similar sort of levels. Um, if you mirror them and the market's turned lower. So I think you've got to say that probably the be the bias here for the gold market is lower. Uh, but this is just a big support and a big round number that's going to attract some longer term uh, gold bulls who are still buying into the uncertainty of the political situation globally at the moment. <coughs> so, um, you know, I, I think there's probably a good chance of a bounce from here. We're getting the first signs of it. Um, if a bit like that oil move, if we can get a move above this 12.30 to 12, you know, maybe you call 12.34 the peak here, um, and it will close above there. Um, that's when we want to start looking for dips back um, for for higher opportunities for the price to move higher. That said, it you know the move could be limited by 12 the 12.50 handle, which was the um, the low here. We had a few false breaks from it here. Um, that to me would be a level worth watching and our moving averages will probably have slided down to about there by the time we get there as well if if we do get there this bounce a little bit of a follow through okay I'm gonna call it a day there thank you very much for attending the weekly charting analysis this week <coughs> good luck with your trading I'll talk to you the same time next week